Welcome to the first video in the series of veterinary bandaging techniques presented by Shaky Paws. All right, so the first bandage that we're going to do is the modified Robert Jones, which most bandages are actually going to be a modification of the modified Robert Jones. So this is a really good bandage to go ahead and have in your repertoire. So first thing you need is your patient. Hopefully we are under sedation or anesthesia or some analgesics. And then of course you need your trusty bandage scissors as well as your cast padding. You may want to make a little donut with your cast padding. I'll show you that in a second. Um, our cling or stretch gauze, non-porous tape, our vet wrap, our elasticon. All right, so the first step to go ahead and place your modified Robert Jones, and this goes for a lot of bandages, is you're going to place your stirrups. Your stirrups is going to be uh, the main part of your bandage that's going to help keep your bandage on. If you forget to put your stirrups on, the bandage is going to come off. If the patient has a wound, please be very careful not to go ahead and place the tape over the wound. And then you're going to take your tongue depressor, go ahead and place your ends of your stirrups on that. The only reason for this is to help the tape not stick to itself. It also can be helpful if you're helping someone else place a bandage and you need a little bit of retraction. As the assistant, um, you can go ahead and pull a little retraction at that point to keep your hands out of the way of the bandage. So the primary layer, if we have any wounds, go ahead and cover that wound. That's going to be our primary layer. Um, now if we have any bony processes, kind of like think about a greyhound with all those big bones that are sticking out. If we put, this is kind of a pressure bandage, so if we put a lot of pressure on there and keep it on there, it's going to apply a lot of pressure to those bony uh, protuberances, kind of like my thumb if I kept it in this position. If I put a lot of pressure on there and keep it on there, I'm going to end up getting a pressure sore or a cubicle ulcer. So what you can do is just take your little donut that you made and say it's like my thumb. You just put it around the process. So then when you apply pressure, there's less pressure applied directly to that process. So you'd end up going around the little bony bits that are coming out of the patient. Not broken bony bits, just the natural bony bits. All right. Now, starting off with the secondary layer, we're going to start off with our cast padding. And you're going to start from one end of the limb, either distal or proximal, it doesn't really matter. You're going to go around the limb. This is not part of the pressure. This is just for padding. You're just kind of putting this on snugly. Now, every time you pass, with the cast padding, make sure that you're covering the last layer by 50% with the new layer. As you can see, I'm doing right here. With the bandage, you can include the toes or not include the toes. I always make sure that I check with the veterinarian if they like their toes exposed or not. Some do, some don't. Some like the toes exposed for monitoring purposes because you can see if we're getting edema in the toes, meaning the bandage is too tight. Some people feel that um, exposing the toes causes more problems. So because it's just a little bit more tricky, I'm going to go ahead and um, cover the toes with this particular bandage. And then I'm just going to go back up the limb to make a second layer. <laughs> Be careful about wrinkles. I almost made a wrinkle there. Any wrinkles that you make are going to create pressure spots um, in this bandage. It's, it's really important for any sort of pressure bandage. It's going to cause a pressure spot or a decubicle ulcer in that particular spot. So everything has to be nice and flat. Take your time. Don't try to speed through one of these bandages. Now we're going to continue on with a secondary layer using our stretch gauze or our cling. This Stretch gauze or cling obviously has a little bit of give to it. So this is when we're going to start putting our pressure on. So you start from one aspect of the limb, distal or medial, it doesn't matter. With each pass, you're going to go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure, like so. Still making sure that you're covering the last layer by 50%. Um, now make sure with the modified Robert Jones that you're not really 
cranking down. That's for the Robert Jones, where there's a bunch of roll cotton, and you can do that. You can't be cranking down. It's just a little bit of pressure. It does take a little bit of time to get used to how much pressure that you're adding. Now at this point, what you're gonna end up doing is taking and reflecting your stirrups back up towards the bandage. So you're gonna do a little spinny, sticky side down. Now we're gonna add the last layer, which is the tertiary layer, which is gonna be your Elasticon or Vet Wrap. Vet Wrap does have a lot of elastic in it, as you can see. You have to be extremely conscientious about when doing a pressure wrap that you're not applying too much pressure. Whenever you look at vet wrap, you can, at, in its natural state, if you look at it really closely, I know you can't appreciate it here, but there's little squares. When you stretch it, there's lines. So for a pressure bandage, you usually want lines. Now, lines is going to be just a little bit too much for this because modified Robert Jones may stay on for a little bit depending on what's going on with the patient. So I sure in the heck don't want a super tight bandage. If this was a Robert Jones, I would be making lines. Right now I want to make rectangles, if you will. So just a little bit of give. The securing and making sure the bandage does not come off is going to be your stirrup, which you can see right here. That's what holds the bandage on. You shouldn't be using the last layer, which is the elasticon, to hold the bandage on. If you're using that to hold the bandage on, it's a bad bandage. You shouldn't be able to pull the bandage off at this point. So we take a little bit of elasticon, which I've already cut, and you end up going around the top of the bandage, this, and you make sure you grab 50% of the bandage and 50% of skin, hopefully, not hair. It's going to be ouchy coming off. The purpose of this is going to be to prevent anything from getting down into the bandage. We don't now, some people like to go ahead and take a little bit of Elasticon and put it around the toes just to extend the durability of the bandage depending on how long it's going to stay on. I don't necessarily like that. I don't think it looks good. There is an art to bandaging, to making it look good. But I understand why people do that. And then we have our lovely little modified Robert Jones. Thanks for watching this video. And for further information about Shaky Paws, check out the links below.